Hello, my friends, and very welcome to my YouTube channel. Recent years have seen the emergence of a drug stealing model that has hit the streets of UK hard. The authorities have also found that drug and sex been used in a bid to lure people into criminality in Northamptonshire. So today we'll talk with Tadas, who have been homeless for two years before eventually succeeding in music career and opening yeah, recording studio. Well, feeling homeless is not very really good. You feel like you have no space in the world. When you have an addiction, people stop caring about you and nothing happens until you start caring about yourself. You just live day by day. In Northampton, there's places where you can eat for free, have a free coffee and some breakfast, but that doesn't mean that you will have a safe place to sleep in at night. For females, they can get raped and for males, they can get robbed usually, you know. Northampton is really problematic in that sense. It has lots of drug addicts, people who just steal your shit mm -hmm. and they want to get a dose of something like crack cocaine, alcohol and all that, you know. All sorts of different addictions, drugs and criminal activity in Northampton. So it is not easy because if you show fear, they're going to eat your life. What was the most scary situation you have ever experienced and a problems that employed person will never understand? Oh, there was a couple of those. I was sofa surfing at several friends' houses and one of them was a crack addict and he knew all the prostitutes and all the drug dealers in the town and I used to sleep on that couch, you know, just paying him rent a couple of pounds a day just mm -hmm. to chill on the couch while people were just coming in and just doing crack and all sorts of oh, crazy that's... stuff, yeah. And one time he made a deal with these uh, gang members who sold crack and they just came in in the middle of the night, five of them. I just fell asleep, but the next thing you know, somebody's banging on the door, it's the police arrested all of the gang members and me as well because they thought I'm a gang member. Well, anyway, after that, I just ran out and I was like, what the hell is going on? So I jumped the train all the way to Birmingham and stayed there for like a night in the bus station. I didn't have anything at all. No communication device, just my coat and a little Bible. And I was just sitting there reading it and trying to calm down. I woke up in a couple of hours crying because it felt so terrible both mentally and mm. physically yeah. that was one of the most terrible moments of my life what was uh, your motivation to wake up in the morning and just keep going when i didn't have anything to sort of live for i thought to myself well at least i'll have a laugh the sense of humor is going to save my ass once you see that you can keep yourself going you start to value things differently you mm -hmm. start to value little things in life and when you value little things in life sort of Build your life again like a Lego. Long-term goals to achieve something. It's not anymore just about fun and jokes then because you start to think, what do I want to do with my life? And your priorities change when you reevaluate and you actually see things more clearly. Make a blessing out of a curse, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the main, main qualities you need to have in order to be able to survive on the streets. You need to have a lot of strength because if you're weak, people will see it. It's just literally hard in every sense to survive on the street when it's cold, it's dark and you have nowhere to go if you're weak. But first of all, mentally weak. Smart as in practical. Is it hard to survive without alcohol if you're absolutely sober? If you absolutely have no money and no friends, and no connections, then you have no choice. Nobody's gonna get you a free drink. There were times when I just came in Northampton and I've got kicked out of like five different flats because of debts, because I had a gambling problem. So I didn't have anyone, no alcohol, no weed, no nothing, no entertainment, no friends, just hanging about. When you come to Northampton and you get to know the local people, you feel like you're in a big party all the time with loads of drugs and alcohol. That's exactly what it feels like. So the guys who are selling drugs, are they drug users too, or are they just doing that for selling? Most of the people, they just do that for selling. They smoke weed and drink alcohol. They don't really use hard drugs, you know, because mm -hmm. Once you get hooked on that kind of stuff, well, you wouldn't be making a business. I have a song about that on my first album, Northside. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put a link on the description of this video. Real shit from Northampton. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What have you learned from that period of time and things that made you stronger? Namaste. Namaste.
I learned a lot of important things. For example, nobody really cares unless you care about yourself. That's just how it is. And you have to put an effort for yourself. You have to be on point, precise, do things that you see as beneficial in the long run, and then you're going to succeed. Do you think your gambling addiction brought you to this kind of situation? Oh, most definitely. If not my gambling addiction, I wouldn't have went through all of that. Previously, before that happened, I wasn't so good at making hip hop music, but after I went through all of that ghetto life, I'm really brilliant in hip hop now. Is there any help with council flats? Council flat system in Northampton and in England in general is quite good because people that have like mental illness and are vulnerable and they've been living in England for their whole life, they tend to get at least a dormitory room or something. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually they get their own council flat, which is sometimes checked by the council workers. And if there's like a family with little children, they will probably get it sooner. We're still not too fast though. They would still have to wait for like at least half a year, I guess. Some people have to wait for years and years. How do you pay for a council flat? Do people have to pay by themselves? Or the government going to cover all the expenses, like for the gas, for electricity? They usually get housing benefits. So with housing benefits, gas will probably pays for like 90%. And then you just have to put in like 50 pounds a month or something like that. Really cheap. Mm. So it's being taken care of most of the time, yeah. Okay. You can have your council flat and still go to homeless food charity and basically then you don't have to pay for anything. Yeah, <laughs> live for free. <laughs> Spend all that money on something else. So that was that us and thank you very much guys for watching our video. Please put like, dislike, pressing the notification bell. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'm going to see you next week. Bye bye. Ciao. Peace. Where's my flower? Bye. <laughs>